Us from House Ways and Means, Congresswoman Claudia Tenney. Congresswoman, what do you think? I mean, do you think the IRS funding should have been cut even more? And do you think audits are still going to go up or, or, or under Biden? What do you think? Well, certainly we'd like to cut it even more. But even as my colleague Lauren Boebert just said, this is over 10 years. Uh, we couldn't get a perfect deal, and I don't want to let perfect be the enemy of the good. So I'm leaning yes. I've been back and forth in my mind over this, just how we could get a better deal with a very, very slim majority right now. But look, at we got to do this incrementally. We've got to fight every year to reduce the IRS. They're hurting our small business community. I'm still a small business owner in upstate New York. Now, we're struggling like all other small businesses, and that's largely because of what goes on in New York State. High minimum wage. They, they didn't get everything they wanted in, the, in New York State this year. They wanted a $21 minimum wage. For now, they got a $17 minimum wage. All of this hurts us when we compete across state lines. When you look at states like Pennsylvania that only have a $7.50 wage, plus just the cost of doing business in New York, the unfunded mandates that are sent down, uh, that's why I support the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. That's why I also su uh, support making it permanent. And uh, we're fighting to do that so that small businesses can continue to get the 20% deduction they get, and they can continue to have, be competitive in New York. Without being competitive, we're going to lose these. And I, I used to write a column every week called, You'll Miss Them When They're Gone. And boy, will we. Yeah, you know, Florida Governor, by the way, Ron DeSantis says he would move to defund the IRS if he's elected president next year. He supports a flat tax. And UBS... The Wall Street mega firm, UBS, they've got a new report. They're predicting that over the next five years, another 50,000, they're talking 10,000 retail stores will close each year over the next five years. That's 50,000. That's outside gas and food service. Congresswoman, we're talking mom and pop stores. Last year, mm -hmm. there were more retail st stores closing than openings. Over 2,000 stores across all retail sectors closed in the past 12 months. These are mom and pop shops. Six out of 10 have less than 20 employees. They're the ones facing IRS audits. Right, exactly, because they can't afford to fight off the IRS. They can't afford lawyers and accountants and compliance. But if this is a problem that's been happening to small businesses. I ran a small newspaper. All of my customers were mom and pop shops, small, uh, small locally owned and operated businesses that were getting crushed by the big box stores. Walmart. We fought Walmart. We fought uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, all those big stores. Not that we were against them, but we could not keep up with the cost of goods with them. They have the huge economies of scale. And so what we've got to recognize is that if we're going to be competitive, we've got the Democrats always have this one size fits all uh, policy. And that's what New York State has done. That's why we've and we've done this on the federal side as well. That's why we've lost small businesses. We have to understand that small businesses need room to grow. Entrepreneurs need to be nourished so they can flourish. If we don't do that, we're going to lose this. We're going to have we're going to really make not just government consolidated. We're going to have consolidated businesses, which hurts entrepreneurship and hurts innovation and a future growth and the ability of, of small business owners and young people to thrive in a future economy. Congresswoman Tenney, thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you.